In recognition of Black History Month, we're extremely honored to have a history maker on the show today. Yeah. Joining us via Zoom, we are proud to introduce Justice Yvette McGee Brown, who is the first black woman to be appointed to the Ohio Supreme Court. Hello! <laughs> Hi. Welcome, it's welcome. It's great to meet you all. We are so How excited are to have you. Great. What an honor for us. Now, first of all, can you tell us what your experience was like being appointed the first African-American woman to serve on the Ohio Supreme Court? So, you know, it, it was a better experience than I thought. Hmm. I wasn't exactly sure what it would be like being the only Democrat on an all-Republican <laughs> court. Oh, but I it was imagine. so great because I found out that my colleagues, of course, were just people. Yeah. And they were welcoming. And um, we got along really well. It was humbling, of course, when the governor first asked. But it was amazing. I can tell you that um, there was one particular conference where I was really going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of my colleagues on a legal issue and the conference went really long and I think for me it really showed what it was like to be collegial and professional because after the conference was over one of the Republican justices came down to my chambers and I had admired a rug he had in his office that had the seal of Ohio on it he brought that rug down as a gift to me no and he way. sat down at this point it's like 6 30 in the evening he sits down with me and he says walk me through it again Tell me your arguments. Let's walk through it again. Wow. And so his willingness to reach out and hear my issues and understand, we ultimately didn't agree, but the fact that he did that meant so much to me. And that's how it was while I was on the court. Everybody was willing to listen. That is that's so, so great. nice to so hear. Great. You know, President Biden plans to nominate the nation's first black female Supreme Court justice, which would be a huge mm -hmm. historical mm -hmm. moment. What are your thoughts on this? You know, I think it's about time, right? Yeah. I think that, you know, the court has existed for 233 years, and we've had 115 justices, and only seven of them have not been white men. It is time. And as I say to everybody, who we are, what our lived experiences are, they matter. And having that lived experience in the room helps determine how these cases are going to be decided. It just adds perspective. And it's overdue. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely overdue. I have to ask you, as a Black woman who held such a prestigious position, what are some of your biggest challenges? I think some of the biggest challenges is that um, you are so public, right? You are... You are out there, everybody knows you, everybody has expectations mm. of you based on what they think you should do. And I think the hardest thing sometimes is to disappoint those people who support you. Because as a judge, you don't make the law, you interpret the law. Mm. And so when you are writing a decision, it's sometimes not going to be the way your supporters wanted to come out. Yeah. And trying to explain that to them and help them to understand it, um, that takes a lot of effort, but it's something that I am committed to. I think people have to understand why the court reaches the decisions it does. That's yeah. so great. Now, out of 115 justices to ever sit on the Supreme Court, only five have been women and only three have been persons of color, two African-American males and one Hispanic female. Why do you yeah. think the number of African-Americans and Hispanics who have sat on the bench has been so low? You know, girl, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> there, there's really no rational explanation for it. Presidents appoint justices. And the reality is women have had the right to vote since 1920. Uh, the Voting Rights Act that protected black people's right to vote has existed since 1965. The fact that we have yet to have more women represented on the court and more black, a black woman on the court, I have no explanation for that. Mm. You know, if offered uh, Justice Brown, would you accept a position? <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, yes. what lawyer is going to say no? I yeah. wouldn't want to be on the uh, United States Supreme Court, but I don't think that's very likely. I love it. I you love it. Know. You never know. Yeah, you never know. know. Uh, what advice would you give to young girls? You know, out there watching, um, what advice would you give to them today? You know, what I say to young girls all the time is to give yourself a chance to grow up and give yourself opportunity. You know, I had a teenage mother. I didn't grow up oh, wow. with much. 
But what I knew is I wanted more out of life. And so what I would say to all of them is don't make decisions today that limit your opportunities tomorrow. Ooh, you have the word. rest of your life to be somebody's boo. Yes. Don't Ooh. focus on that. Yes. Focus on developing yes. you yes. and making yourself the best person you can be. Because mm -hmm. I can tell you the better you get, the better the men get. That I, that I promise you. I tell you right A now, whole word. I wish you were sitting right here, I'd hug you. Yes. <laughs> Yes. This is Yvette McGee Brown. Thank you so much for joining us today. You are an inspiration to us all. Yes. And we wish you continued success.